Hey guys, all right, today I have something a little different for you. So instead of me doing the reformer workout along with you, I'm gonna have my husband Otto do the workout with you. Okay, so he's done a bunch of these workouts behind the scenes, he's real good on the reformer. All right, but he has got one workout that he in particular likes to do. He's a cyclist, so for him, a lot of different mobility movement is good after he goes for a long ride or just week on week, you know, he's constantly on the bike. It's a good chance for him to get on the reformer and kind of open up those hips and stretch things out. So all the way back from June, 2020, I have a workout on the channel called Active Recovery and Stretch. Okay, so that's a workout he does every week religiously. Uh, opens up his hips, stretches out his hamstrings, relieves the quads, all of that. Uh, so it's a really good workout for him. So today, he's gonna do it, and I'm gonna deep dive into the cues that when I'm on the reformer doing it along with you, sometimes I don't get to all of them. And I can kind of show you in his body what's happening and all that alignment, that stuff that you might miss when I'm doing it. Okay, so today we've got him set on two red springs and a blue to start. Again, I'm on a balanced body studio reformer. You know that from all my other videos. Okay, so, and I have a, an infinity foot bar, so if it looks a little different, that's why your foot bar, foot bar will be perfect no matter what you have and what brand of reformer. So, two heavy springs and a light is where you wanna be, three springs. Okay, that foot bar is all the way up. Because I have an infinity foot bar and I have a long carriage, we've got it in the most upright position. If yours is a little tilted forward, that's usually its first position, and that's perfectly fine. For Otto, I'm gonna have him lift his headrest up. Um, he has an extreme arch to the back of his neck, so this is gonna better align his spine. And have him lie all the way down in that supine position. We're gonna start with footwork today. So I'm gonna go through the same exact exercises that are from that video all the way back in June. Okay, that active recovery and stretch. We're gonna flow, flow through the whole workout together, about 45 minutes. All right, so we're gonna start with his legs parallel right off the hips. So normally I cue four inches apart, but you wanna go right off your hips. I say four inches because usually people go wider than that. Make sure that your feet are coming straight off your hips. So for Otto, that's a little bit more like six inches. Now he's going to have the balls of his feet connected to that foot bar. So the base of the big toe all the way to the base of that pinky toe is where he wants to be connected. And he wants to hold that connection point for now. Okay, we're going to have Otto lengthen all the way out so he can find his neutral spine. So with two long legs, I want him to focus right now on a heavy tailbone, a little lift in his low back, just enough that he could maybe fit his fingertips under there, okay? Just so he's not pressing the low back into the carriage. The tailbone, I'm sorry, the tailbone is heavy, but the hip bones are pointed straight up to the ceiling, okay? So you don't want your hip bones rolling forward, okay? That's gonna send you into an anterior tilt and you don't want them tilted backwards where your tailbone's picking up because that's gonna send you into a posterior tilt. So we've got neutral pelvis. Belly button's pulled up and in and those ribs are closed. All right, from here, Otto's gonna start by lifting his heels a little higher, almost like he's pointing his toes, like he's, he's lifted. So lift those heels high. Good. Now he's going to hold those heels right there. He's going to exhale as he bends both knees. Okay. Allowing the knees to track and stop over the hip. Good. That's far enough right there. And then he's going to send it all the way back out on his inhale. Good. Exhale. Stopping those knees over the hips. Now, you know, we have a mirror in the studio here, so he can take a look at himself. He can watch for that alignment. Having me stand here and kind of cue and, and give him that tactile stopping point helps, okay? Over time in your body, you'll start to feel, feel where that alignment is because what happens is, is when the knee stops over the hip, that femur bone can sink right down into the hip socket, okay? So he's feeling that connection. Once he gets that femur bone down in the hip, he's free to engage from the back of the leg, right where the glute and the hamstring meet, to send that carriage out. Okay, so I want you to focus on that, Otto, as you press out. Also, when he bends those knees, those sitting bones, I want him to think about reaching those sitting bones for the foot bar. Good, and that's where he might start to find a little shake or tremble in his body. Once he really focuses on that alignment, all that connective tissue can start to fire. Good, keeping those heels high. Now, we speak. I speak a lot about breath, right? He's inhaling as he lengthens out. Why? That's important. The reason he inhales as he lengthens out is because he's creating internal length with that diaphragm. On an inhale, your diaphragm drops. So internally, okay, you get a bit longer. As he exhales, 
All that comes back to that start position. So that's when we bend our knees. He inhales for that internal length and he exhales. Everything comes back to start. Good. Let's go for four more. You know, talked a lot, right? Kept you here a lot. Good. Last three. Good. And he's opening the back of the knee all the way, not locking into the joint, but fully opening up the back side of the knee. Good. Last one. Good. Now on the next one, I'm going to have him extend all the way out and hold. Now he's going to let those heels fall under the bar. Good. And he's going to press back up to the toes. And now he's going to allow those knees to bend. Good. He's going to extend all the way out, holding it there. Let the heels fall under the foot bar. Now he's getting a big stretch now through the back line of the leg that way, coming back up to the balls of the feet and then bending those knees. So once he gets to that heels coming under the bar, you'll feel the Achilles tendon, the calf, the, into the hamstring, that nice big stretch. Really press into that. Allow the back line of the leg to stretch. Allow that deep articulation through the ankle. Good. And for runners too, this is a really important thing. The constant pounding on the feet and the joints through the legs, this footwork is just so excellent to kind of alleviate that and get some good range of motion back. Good. Last four. Good. And really coming up to the balls of the feet. So when he lets those heels go under, he really brings those heels all the way back up to bend those knees. Good. Really finding that big range of motion through the ankle. Good. Last two. Good. And let's go one more. Good. Now on the next one, Otto's going to take those legs long. Okay. And he's going to bring his heels onto the foot bar now. So the center of his heel is going to come onto the foot bar. Now he's going to open up those legs real wide and externally rotate. Okay, so we've been in parallel, but now he's going to take those legs and he's going to externally rotate from the top of the hip. So he's turned out. Okay, that's a wide second position. You can imagine you're on the floor doing a plie. Okay, that's the position we're in. So we went from parallel, externally rotated from the hip, and now he's in this position. He's just laying down. Okay, from here, he's going to inhale as he extends out and exhale as he allows those knees to bend. Now, what he's keeping an eye on first is that neutral pelvis and that neutral spine. So he's not allowing the tailbone to pick up. The tailbone is heavy and stays connected as if it's super glued to the carriage. Okay, he's holding the belly button up and in and he's got the ribs closed. Now down to the legs, he's got that kneecap tracking with big toe, second toe. That alignment is something we are always looking for. So you'll hear me say that over and over again. Excellent. Good. And he's got those heels sincerely flat or those feet sincerely flexed because he's got the center of the heel on the foot bar. So what this did was it took him more into the back line of the leg. He should feel the glute a lot more. Good. Extending all the way out, opening up the back of the knee completely, just not popping into the joint. So if you have a habit of hyperextending, okay, or really locking out into your joint, that's something you want to watch for. That's not something that Otto does in his body very much, but if it's something you know that you do, um, we don't want to do that because all that is is then you're hanging out in the joint. Those joints are strong and they can support a lot of weight. It takes away a lot of the work, okay? So we want to get rid of that and just make sure that we're working full range of motion. Good, let's go for four. Good. Same thing. That inhale happens as he goes out. That internal length is created. Last three. Good. And that external rotation, he's got those inner thighs shining a little bit more up towards the ceiling. Good. Last two. Good. And let's go one more. Good. Now on this one, he's going to hold right here. He's going to bring those feet. Now those heels together. Okay, towards the center of the foot bar. So move those feet all the way in. Yes, but you're going to bring the balls of your feet onto the foot bar. So he already did it without me having to tell him. Those heels are glued together. Okay, so he wants the balls of the feet back on that foot bar, base of the pinky toe, all the way to the base of the big toe. Okay, heels are super glued together. They're not allowed to separate anymore until we start to kind of articulate a little bit more through the, the feet. Okay, so from here, same thing. He's going to bring those heels up. He's going to lift the heels like he's pointed those toes. And his heels separated a little bit, and that's okay. If you want to re-glue them together, that's fine. Okay, inner thighs are all zipped up. 
on the exhale, he's going to bend both knees, keeping the knees, not opening them all the way wide. And your body may just be like, let's let it go. Just open up those legs. No, you still want the kneecap to track with big toe, second toe. Inhale, take it all the way out, fully opening the backside of the leg and zipping up the inner thighs. He's still stopping the knee directly over the hip, allowing that femur bone to sink deep into the pelvis. Good. And reaching when he's in that bent position, he can think about those sits bones, center of the glute, reaching for that foot bar. Lots of length, again, created through the torso and the body. Good. We're always thinking about that length. So that's really important. Let's go for two more and then we'll start to add those heels falling under the bar. Good. Inhale out. Good. Good. And try not to shorten the movement. Like that was a pretty quick one for him. Find the full range. Good. Now hold it there. Let those heels fall under the bar. Keep them zipped up. Let the heels fall under. Bring the heels up and then bend the knees. Good. Really watching where those knees are tracking, where they stop. Okay. And this is, you know, it may seem like simple movement, right? And fly through it, not fully extending, not stopping the knees where they belong, not really getting that articulation through the ankle and through the foot. So if you really start to focus on this and on two red and a blue spring, you're going to start to feel some work there. You're going to start to feel that shake and that tremble. Those legs are going to get tired. Excellent. Good. Keep it going. Let's go for four more just like this. And then we're going to go single leg before we move on. So the weight's going to get a little heavier. We're not going to change the springs. They're going to stay exactly how they are. Good. Last three. Excellent. We've got two more right here. Still stopping, not shortening the movement, really taking it all the way through. I'll never rush you through any of this movement. So you want to find that full range of motion in your body. Good. All right. On the next one, let's hold the heels lifted and not bend the knees anymore. We're going to stay in first position. So heels together, toes turned out, ball of the feet on the foot bar. He's going to take his right leg and reach it just over the foot bar holding that external rotation. So he simply took the foot and lifted it up. Inner thigh still shining up. Okay. And those toes are pointed on the right leg. Same movement. He's going to bend that left knee, stopping the knee over the hip, allowing it to track with big toe, second toe. And then he's going to extend it all the way out and let the heel fall under the bar. Good. Same thing. Pick the heel up. Bend the knee, allow it to track with big toe, second toe, and bring it all the way back up. So the weight significantly increased for him taking that one leg off the foot bar. But we're not going to stay here long. This is our only layer. Good. One nice thing about the active recovery and stretch workout is that there's not too much layering going on. It really is an active recovery workout where you can just kind of get the body mobile again and moving and get that stretching that's so important. Good. Last three. Good. That right leg is holding external rotation. So if he was to bring it back to the foot bar, which he will, you'll see those heels will touch again. Good. Let's go for one more. Sending it out. Heel falls under. Good. Bring it back. Okay. Now the right foot's going to come back to the bar. So bring that back. Heels together. Right foot's going to stay there. Left leg is going to reach above the foot bar. Now holding that external rotation. On your exhale, Otto, you're going to bend that right knee, allowing it to track with big toe, second toe. Good. And then inhale, extend it all the way out. Now, Otto, before you move on, I want you to shift that foot a little bit because we're missing the base of the pinky toe connected. So you want to bring that up. Good. Recommit even, even further. Can you bring it up to a little bit more right here? Good. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Holding that there. There we go. Good. Tailbone still heavy. We're stopping that right knee over the hip. Good. Both inner thighs are shining a little bit more towards the ceiling. Now, Otto in his own body is naturally more externally rotated. Parallel is difficult for him. So in this movement, his body just naturally aligns easier this way. Um, In parallel, it's more of a struggle for him. So this is a good position that he can work through. Parallel, I'd probably keep him in parallel more if I was to work with him privately and kind of work on that, that alignment. Good. Let's go for three more right here. Really getting that stretch through the back line of the right leg. So allow that heel to press under as much as you can. Good. Last two.
Good, and let's go one more. Good, and bring it the left foot back to the foot bar. Good, bend those knees and bring it all the way in. All right, now we are gonna change our springs. We're gonna do feet and strap. We're gonna take off one of the red. One rep comes off. So you've got a red and a blue on, a heavy and a light. Any brand of reformer, two springs should be just fine for this. And you could go heavier if you wanted, but this is gonna be good for today for this active recovery piece. He can keep his head rest up for now. And those long loops are coming around his feet. Okay, now once he's in this position, you want to make sure that those loops are around the arches of your feet. So I'm going to move them down a little bit, Otto, just right around the arches of the feet. Okay, once he's there, he's going to glue, he's going to recommit to that tailbone being glued down. Now, for me in my body, my legs can't be straight up that way because my tailbone lifts. So for him, he's got to feel that in his body. So I'm going to ask him to take his hands to his hip bones and kind of find for that neutral pelvis where those two ASIS bones, the bony landmarks at your hip, shine straight up. Again, not tilting forward and not rolling back. So once he's found that, have you found that in your body? Tailbone is heavy, glued down on the carriage. That is his neutral and start position. So when I say legs up, you notice they're not straight up. He's got a little tilt forward. Okay, that's his neutral. He's got that little lift in his low back in this position, and he's got his ribs closed, belly button pulled up and in. We're going to start with simple hinges. So if you feel like you can keep your hip bones in that position as you work, you can bring your arms down by your side. If at any point you feel like you're losing that connection, bring your hands back to your hips and feel for that position of the pelvis. Okay, from here, he's going to inhale again, creating that internal length as he hinges those legs down towards the foot bar. And then he's going to exhale as he brings it back to start his neutral. Good. Inhale, lengthen it back out. Exhale, bringing it back to that neutral and start position. So he's got those legs in parallel, toes shining straight up, inner thighs are glued together. Good. Good. And how does that weight feel? Not too heavy, right? Like it's just good active, active work. Good. There are definitely workouts where I'll do this with you and I'll load those. <laughs> we'll load those springs. But for right now, the, in the, for this workout in particular, we're not going to do that. Good. Let's go three more. Good. Last two. Good. Now we're going to take this into leg circles. So the next time that Otto has those legs up in that neutral position, we're going to start by opening the legs at the top and circling them down and around. They're going to zip up at that 45 degree angle. Now he's going to bring them back up to start. Open those legs and bring them down and around, zipping them up at that 45 degree angle. So this is, again, where you might have lost the pelvis, that neutral pelvis. Go ahead and take your hands there. If you feel like it's shifting around, you want to make sure that that's not changing. Okay, so as we add on choreography, it's going to get more and more, dif or more, and more difficult. Um, these, I would call these layers. A lot of times I instruct my clients that if a layer doesn't work for you or you feel like the body isn't ready to stabilize, then you need to take it back. Take it back to just that hinge and practice that. But if you feel like you can keep that pelvis quiet, this is a, a beautiful next layer in this feet and straps series. Good. Let's go one more in that direction. Opening up the inner thighs. Good. Getting that little bit of stretch. Good. And now at the top, you know, we're going to hold here. We're going to lengthen down to that 45 and open up that circle at the bottom now. It's going to zip up at neutral. Good. Inhale, lengthening out, creating that internal length, opening up and bringing it back and around. Good. Zipping up those inner thighs so we close those legs at the top, your neutral position. Okay. It may not be legs straight up. Making sure that tailbone stays down. Now, with this spring weight, it is a little a little easier to keep the tailbone down. Uh, with heavier weight, it does want to pull those feet and those that tailbone up off the carriage. So, but he's doing a good job of keeping a really neutral pelvis. Good. Let's go three more in this direction. Good. Excellent. Good, last 
two. Good. Okay, last one. Now on this one, we're going to come back to that neutral and start position. We're going to take that 45 degree hinge and we're going to hold it. Okay, legs are going to stay in parallel, toes shining up. Now he's going to bend his knees like he's sitting in a chair. He's going to get those shins to be parallel with the floor and the knees stop over the hips. Now from the back line of the leg, he's going to send those heels all the way out to two long legs. Good. And on that exhale, he's going to bend those knees and stop them over the hips, sending those sits bones for the foot bar. Good. Right there is where he wants to even a little bit further out, further this way. Good. Stop right there. That's his knees over hips. Okay. Inhale. Take it all the way out. Good. Exhale. Stop those knees over the hips. Excellent. Good. So I want him to think of that intentional movement when he takes those straps back out to not just push through the foot, okay, but to think about initiating right below the sitting bone, right where that glam line is, where the glute and the hamstring meet. That's where he's going to initiate that movement from. He's going to think about that quiet neutral pelvis and that core is engaged. Yes, good. Again, inhaling as he takes the legs out, exhaling as he bends them back in. Let's go for four. Good. Inhale out. Good. Last three. Good. Last two. Good. And last one. Good. Now on this one, I'm going to have Otto extend those legs back out. Okay, hold there. He's going to glue the legs together and he's going to swivel into that first position. So inner thighs are going to shine up, heels glued together. Good. Now from here, we're going to continue those hinges. We're going to go back to the hinges. So we're not going to bend the knees yet. We're going to hinge up. Good. And then we're going to inhale as we lengthen down. Good. Just that hinge from the pelvis again. So recommitting to that very quiet and stable pelvis. The core stabilizes the pelvis. So he's going to make sure that that belly button's pulled up and in. Good. And he's holding that little lift in the low back. Good. And he's bringing those legs as low as he can without the pelvis rolling forward, tilting forward and picking, overarching the low back. So what happens a lot in this is I see clients over arc the low back. Okay. So now that there's a big rainbow here and the ribs open up, we've lost the core connection then. So you want to keep that engaged that tight. Good. All right. Let's go two more. Good. Now on the next one, I'm going to have auto hold at that 45. Good. Now from here, we're going to do that same knee bend. He's going to come into that 90, 90 bend knees bending in. He's going to ignore those straps, even though they get in the way knees stop over the hips, heels stay glued together and he's going to inhale, sending it back out. Now, again, he's reminding himself, I'm not pushing from the foot. I'm working from the back line of the leg. My core is engaged so that I can stabilize this pelvis. Good. Lots of length on both sides of his waistline the whole time he works. Good. Now, as he takes those legs out, they're getting tired. Okay. So there's going to be points where you don't want to fully extend. I want you to think about zipping up those inner thighs like a zipper. So the legs get completely long. Again, if you tend to hyperextend, we don't want to lock into the joint. Good. Excellent. Let's go for four more. And then we're going to take it into a little hold and a pulse. Good. Last three. Again, he's thinking about shins parallel to the floor when he bends those knees in. Good. Two. Good. This is his last one in that full range of motion. On his next one, he's going to bring it into those bent knees and he's going to hold. Okay. So we're going to commit to heels glued together, shins parallel to the floor, knees tracking with big toe, second toe stopped over the hips, sending the femur bone deep. Okay. Now from here, he's going to recommit to pulling the belly button up and in, and he's going to pulse from right here at that glam line, one inch out through the heels and one inch in. And it's very teeny tiny. Okay. But as he comes in, notice those hips don't get closer to his belly button. They continue to stop directly over the hip. 
it's very small and intentional movement. So a lot of times I'll also have clients think the bigger the movement, the better. These are very small, intense movements, okay? And if we think about where they're generating from, they're going to most likely start to happen from there, okay? So think about where you want that movement to come from, okay? And engage that and work from there. Good. Core is tight. Pelvis is quiet. Good. We're here for six. Good. Last five. Good. Last four. Excellent. You've got three. Keep it going. Last two. Good. And bring it all the way in. Good. So he's going to bend those knees and he's going to take those loops off of his feet. Nice and carefully hang them up behind him on those uh, handlebars. Once he's done, he's going to come on up. And we're going to leave our springs on that one heavy and one light for now. So a red and a blue is where we're going to stay for right now. Okay, I'm going to have Otto put his headrest down. So as we get further down, uh, we are going to do some bridging. And we want to make sure that that headrest is flat for that part, okay? He's going to turn and face rear. And he's going to straddle the shoulder blocks. So he's going to sit nice and tall in those sitting bones. Now, that posture is not easy to accomplish. Okay, but he's going to sit right on the tips of his sitting bones and nice and tall out of the low back. Those feet are on the rails or those legs are just off. His heels are off the rails. They can be on. It's his choice for him. The nice alignment is having heels off of those railings. Okay, he's going to reach forward and he's going to choke up on those straps. So he wants to reach above the loop somewhere around the metal carabiners or even higher onto the ropes wherever you feel like you have some good resistance. Okay, because we're going to let those the weight of the straps work with our spinal articulation here. So he's going to be nice and tall. Good. Thinking about a puppet string coming right out the crown of his head. Nice and long, nice and tall spine. From here, he's going to let those elbows open up so there's no tension there. Good. And on his exhale, he's going to let the weight of the straps round and pull him down into a forward fold. Good. Good. So this range of motion is going to be really different for everybody. Good. And he's just going to hold it there to start. Okay. So he's got the rounding of the spine. He's letting the weight of the straps pull him down. His shoulder blades are down and around the ribs. Good. And he's getting a stretch, a real deep stretch through the back line of the leg. Just holding it there for four. Good. Last three. Last two. Good. On his inhale, he's going to roll up out of that and sit really tall right back up on those sitting bones. Good. Let's take it one more time. We're going to forward fold. Allow the weight of the straps to round and pull you down over those legs. He's maintaining parallel in those legs. So he's not letting the, the feet rotate outbound. Okay. He's keeping the toes shining up. Okay. So the inner thighs are not rotated upward. Good. Holding it there for four. Good. Last three. Last two. Good. Now on this one, he's going to come all the way up to that fully stacked position with his spine. Now from here, he's going to take a roll down. Okay, so when he's going to start, he's going to hinge. One inch flat back hinge. Hold. So he'll come on back up, Otto. Right back up on those sitting bones. Good. Now he went for the roll right away. What we want is we want to hinge first with a very flat back like a lean. Okay. That's one or two inches. Stop at that point. That rolled you off the tips of your sitting bones. Now he's going to roll the tailbone, the low back, the mid back, and he's going to approach that upper back until he feels that tremble start to click on in that anterior core. And he's going to come all the way back up, stacking the spine and then allowing the weight of the straps to pull him all the way over. Good. Good. He's going to inhale, come all the way back up, stacking the spine. Good. He's going to hinge. Once he's at that fully upright hinge, now he's going to roll the tailbone, the low back, the mid back. Good. Finding that shake in his body. And then he's going to roll all the way back up and allow on that exhale for those straps to roll him forward or pull him forward into that forward fold. Good. Let's go two more just like that. He's going to round it up, articulating that spine. Good. Hinge, curl the tailbone, low back like gear wheels. You can kind of think about that spine. Good. Finding that shake in the body, pulling that belly button up and in. Good. And then he's going to allow the straps to pull him over. Nice. You're going to go one more just like that. Good. Inhale, stack the spine. Good. Hinge, tailbone, low back. 
mid back, hold, pull the belly button between the ribs. Good. And then roll it on up, stacking the spine and allowing that forward fold to happen at the same time. Good. And he's going to hold this forward fold right here for four. Good. Last three. Last two. As he inhales, he's going to roll all the way up and stack that spine. Very nicely done. Okay, go ahead and hang up those loops for just a second. We're going to change our, stra- our springs. Okay, so he's going to take off that one red. We're going to come into mermaid. One red, one blue spring is where you want to be. Okay, so he's going to keep that left leg hooked in front of him, and that right leg is going to hook back, and it's going to be right up against those shoulder blocks. Now, mermaid is a difficult position for a lot of people, especially in men, just from the physiology of the hips. Women's hips are a little bit wider, larger, okay? Birthing, all of that, right? So it's a little bit more manageable in a woman. Otto's gotten very used to this position, but if it's highly uncomfortable, you can always take a yoga block. I'm going to grab it right now. And you can place it underneath your stationary hip. So he could place it right like that, underneath that left sitting bone, okay? And that's going to make the flexibility less of a big demand on his body, okay? But he's okay, so we're going to take that yoga block away, okay? And we're going to continue on from there. All right, so from here, he's going to reach... Actually, we're going to start with side bends. My, my bad. Okay, so he's got that right leg hooked against the shoulder blocks. From here, he's going to take that left hand onto the foot bar. He's already got it there. And it's going to be in front of the shoulder, Okay, so you've got your shoulder right. This is straight off the shoulder. We want to be in front of the shoulder. Good. Okay, from here, he's going to exhale as he pushes. Well, we're going to side bend this way. Okay, so we're going to come over with that right arm. Okay, he's fully extended. Yes, and he's pushing away from that foot bar. Good. And he's going to allow that right hip to lift off the carriage. That's fine. But he's looking for a long length out of that waistline. So he wants to think about picking the waistline up out of the pelvis and the arm up out of the waistline. And he's keeping that right arm just in front of the ear to keep the ribs closed. Good. He's going to come all the way back up to a stacked spine. Right hand is going to come to the shoulder block. And that left arm is going to reach up and over to the right staying in front of his ear. Okay. Again, keeping the ribs closed. This stretch on this side usually feels real nice. Good. Picking that waistline up out of the pelvis. Good. Bringing the left hand back to the foot bar, pressing away as he takes that reach on the right. Good. Bicep in front of the ear. Good. He's not rotating his shoulders. His shoulders are square and facing forward. Good. Coming all the way up. Hand to the shoulder block. And taking that left arm up and over for that big stretch right there. Good. And bringing it all the way back. Now, he's going to reach for the short loop here. So we're going to move on into some rotations here. And now he's going to flip his legs into an Indian-style position or crisscross applesauce position. Good. Okay. Now from here, he's got the short loop in his hands. Okay. He's going to sit up tall in those sitting bones. Now again, for him, flexibility through this position is not the easiest. Would you rather be like this or on your knees? On your knees. So knees is another option. Okay. So it's going to be more challenging to stabilize the pelvis, but for him, for flexibility reasons, it's going to be more comfortable overall. And that challenge, he's, he's ready for that challenge anyway. Okay. So we're going to take this short loop. Okay. From here, I'm not going to give him any sort of prop, but because he is on his knees, I want him to think about the inner thigh connection rather than gripping with his booty. So that's another thing that he's done this workout many times that he hasn't had to think about when he was seated before. Okay, so since he's on his knees, I want to make sure those knees are about four inches apart, just underneath the hips. Okay, he's nice and tall. Sternum over pubic bone. He's not leaning forward or leaning back, we've got the entire core working. He's got those hands right at the center of his chest. Now, from here, he's going to rotate his torso, but he's going to keep his hips quiet. So that's quite a long, uh, tall order. He's going to take that strap, and he's going to rotate to the right, extending that left arm out. Okay, he's rotating from the waist and the rib basket, but the pelvis didn't change. Okay, he's going to come all the way back to center, and he's going to go the other way to the left. He's going to take it across the body, rotating, okay, but not rotating the pelvis. So what he needs to watch right here is for those hip bones to stay shining forward. Okay, Otto, go ahead, take it the other way, and I'm just going to give you that tactile cue not to move the pelvis. 
Good. He's rotating from the waist up. Good. Now hold that for a second. What he's thinking about is his ribs. Okay, his left ribs rotating towards his right inner thigh. That connection is a real connection. That left shoulder to that right inner thigh. So that's the connection we want to think about. Not how far can I pull the arms. Not how far can I twist my waist. I want him to think about that connection. Pelvis is quiet. Okay, bring it across the other way. Keeping the pelvis quiet. Thinking about those inner thighs drawing up along the spine. Good. And coming all the way back. So he's not going to clench the booty, right? He's thinking about inner thighs which are like those suspender muscles that run up along the spine. He's pulling those up, okay, to use the core to stabilize the pelvis. Good, and getting into that low belly and everything. So on your knees is much more challenging than being seated, for sure. Excellent. Got, I don't, go ahead and relax the back feet for me. So those toes are kind of turned under right now. Allow them to relax. It's going to put less pressure on the kneecap. Good. Good, and we'll go for two more all the way through here. Good, pelvis is quiet, and he's thinking about that rotation right here at the waistline. Good. Good, and you can let your eyes follow that strap. Good, and we'll go one more through. Good. Notice he's keeping that pelvis really quiet. It absolutely helps when somebody gives you that tactile cue. When you're all by yourself, you're like, honey, it is quiet. It isn't moving. Good. Last one all the way to the left. Good. And we're going to bring it all the way back to start and go ahead and hang up that strap. Very nicely done. All right. We're going to move on. We're going to lunge now. So Otto's going to keep his springs on one blue. His right foot's going to stay on the floor, and it's going to come somewhere up around the front of the carriage, somewhere around that position. Okay, left foot is going to come up against the shoulder block. Now today, because we want this to be a little bit more of a stretching and recovery workout, he's going to keep his back knee down. Okay, so that back knee is going to stay on the carriage. Okay, and he's <laughs> because he's so tall, go ahead and extend that right leg all the way up for me. If that left knee lifts, that's fine. Okay, you know what? For him... We're going to keep it like this because I want him to fully extend that right leg. So for him, when he bent his, or when he kept his back knee on the carriage, go ahead and show him what that looks like if your back knee is on the carriage. It already put him into a lunge. Okay. And I don't want him in a lunge to start. So we're going to start standing all the way up on top of that right leg. So he's going to glue all five toes to the floor. Nice flat foot. Okay. We want to always keep those toes down. Okay. We don't want to work through the heel, but we do want the heel heavy. Hands are going to be on the foot bar. Okay. And he's going to think about already drawing that belly button up and in. Now he's going to send that carriage back, but the only reason the carriage is going to go back is because he's bending that right knee. So go ahead and find that lunge. Allow your torso to tilt forward, Otto. Good. So he's looking for that nice diagonal line all the way back down the body because we want to keep a neutral pelvis. Now hold that right there. He's going to think about lots of length from the right kneecap all the way through the right sitting bone. So that length is really important to think about. He wants his pelvis to be quiet, to be level. Okay. So both hip bones are right in alignment with one another. So that's why he's going to reach that right sitting bone really far back. That re reach should not change the alignment of the knee. That knee needs to stay in front of the ankle. It should line up somewhere around the middle of your foot. And that right kneecap tracks with big toe, second toe. Okay, so that's going to protect the knee. All right, from here, he's going to inhale as he comes all the way back up to a straight right leg. So that's going to allow his back knee to lift off the carriage, and that's fine. Good. Exhale, bend that right knee, allowing the torso to tilt to protect that low back as well. Good, and he's finding that deep stretch. Good, and then coming all the way up. So he's also allowing that left inner, th or that left uh, hip to open up, that left psoas muscle at the base of the spine, that inner thigh again. He's allowing that to stretch. Go ahead and find the, keep finding that lunge. Good, he's keeping those toes down on the floor. Full foot connection. Good, good. He's shifted that pelvis a little bit. I don't know if you saw that. Good, come all the way up. Good. Let's go one more with just the lunge. Okay. And then we're going to work with a straight front leg. Good. Excellent. Good. Coming all the way back up. 
Good. So now he's going to hold that front leg nice and straight. Now for him, okay, that back knee is going to have to come down to the carriage at some point. So, okay, so he's going to start with the back knee down, okay, and he's going to lengthen out that front leg. Good. And I'm going to ask you, Otto, to really work on opening up the back of that knee. There it is. So don't worry so much about pressing the carriage back as much as you worry about opening up the back of that right knee. That's where the stretch is coming from. And I can tell in his body that's that's a big stretch for him. Okay, so the body's already trembling. It's already connective tissues already firing. Good. So I don't want you to think about pressing that carriage back. That would be kind of a cheat. Okay, it's more here. Good. Bringing it all the way back up, keeping that leg straight. Good. Good. Now he's going to go nice and slow this time. Again, not thinking about pressing the carriage back because that's not what we want. That's not the job here. The job here is to work the carriage moves because we deal with this leg, this right leg right here. Good. Good. He's keeping the hips in line with one another. Good. And he's working at really opening up the back of the knee again, not popping into the joint. Otto doesn't really do that with his joints, but a lot of people do. Good. And then bringing it all the way back up. Good. Let's go two more like that because that's a big stretch in his body and I can see that that's something that really does need to lengthen out. Tight hamstrings, lots of cycling, lots of cycling. Good. Tight quads. Good. All this is the back line of the leg. So he's probably, he's feeling this all the way up the calf, the hamstring and into the glute. Good. And coming all the way back up. Good. On this next one, Otto, I want you to really work at keeping the, the hips together. They work together. Good. Yes. Very nice. Excellent. Excellent. Let's hold that one. Let's hold it for four. Good. Try not to let the hips twist. Last three. Yeah. Good. Last two. And bring it all the way back up. Very, very nice. All right. We're going to move on from there and we're going to come into a side lunge. So he's going to turn and face the carriage now. And we're staying on that one blue spring. Okay, now we're going to do this one in external rotation. So his standing leg, instead of being parallel, okay, he's going to externally rotate it at that 45 degree angle. So the toes are now shining outbound. That's going to allow for the knee to track a little bit better in his body. Okay, his left leg, the side of the foot is up against that shoulder block. And he's going to want to start with that leg straight, okay, not bent. All right, from here, his hand is on that foot bar. Again, he's going to work with some deep range of motion. Right knee is going to bend. Okay, he's going to find that lunge, and he's going to allow that torso to tilt forward. So again, he's looking for the reach from the right kneecap out the right sits bone. That's going to get that torso to tilt to protect that low back. The big reach here, tilt here. Good. And then he's going to inhale as he comes all the way up. So he's already going to feel a big stretch through that left inner thigh, right? Is that where you're feeling that stretch? Good. Bending that right knee, allowing that torso to tilt. Good. Good. And bringing it all the way up. So he's taking it nice and slow so he can really feel that stretch in his body. And that's what this workout's all about. So I encourage you to really work slow and to feel this in your body. Feel where you're, where is it stretching? Am I engaged in the right spot? Is my belly button pulled up and in? Am I finding long length on my waistline? And really, you know, Think about these cues, internalize these cues, and they're different for everybody. And if you ever have any questions for me, I'm, I love answering these kinds of questions. So you can always leave them below the video. I'm happy to dive deeper into any specific questions or comments. Good, Otto. Good. Let's go two more right there. Excellent. On his next one, we're just going to hold it a little longer. Good. So he's going to take that lunge, that right kneecaps tracking beautifully with big toe, second toe. Again, that big sits bone reach keeps the knee behind the toes because we don't want the knee coming in front of your toes. Okay. And he's holding. Belly button's going to pull a little deeper in than it was before. Good. And he's here for six, for five. Good. And he's breathing for four. <laughs> Good. Last three, last two. And come all the way up out of that. Very nice. Okay. He is going to come down on his back. We're going to stay on one blue spring. We're going to bridge. So make sure that headrest is down. His is already down from before. Foot bar is staying exactly where it is. It's not changing at any point during this workout. Okay. So he's all the way supine on the carriage once again. Okay. Now 
his spine is not perfectly in alignment because that headrest is down, but that's okay because we're going to bridge and we're going to bring those hips off the carriage. So we're going to put pressure on the upper part of the spine. So we don't want that headrest up by any means at all. All right. On the foot bar, he's got not the balls of his feet and not the center of his heel, but the heel pocket. So he wants to have just before you get to the heel, that little dip, he wants that engaged on the foot bar. Okay, he's got those legs in parallel, so the legs are coming straight off the hips. Beautiful. Now, he's going to try to keep that carriage in, and that is a real tall order on one blue spring. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit more work to start, but it's gonna, we're going to layer in so that one blue spring will be necessary. All right, for now, I'm going to ask him to engage through the hamstrings. He's going to keep that carriage against the bumper, and he's going to inhale as he takes those hips up. Good. Pressing through the foot bar, opening up the front of the body. Good. And he's thinking about long length on the front of the body. And he's going to exhale as he rolls the spine back down to the carriage. So we're hinging up. So we're lifting with a straight spine up. And then when he comes down, he's rolling down. So I'll show you that again. He's going to lift. He's going to keep the carriage home. Yeah, that's going to ask the hamstrings to activate. Good. He's long length. And from the top of his spine, the base of his skull, he is rolling one vertebrae at a time all the way to the tailbone hits the carriage. Good. He's going to keep that carriage home. He's going to hinge it up. Good. He's going to hold. And good. And he's thinking more about length than lift. From the back of the uh, base of the skull, top of the spine, he's going to roll one vertebrae at a time back down to the carriage. Tailbone hits down. Good. Good. Lots of length. Good. So on this neck, um, after he does gets through this one, take your time. Good. Keeping that carriage home. Pull it in with those hamstrings. Good. It's coming out slowly. I'm giving it a little help right here. Now on this one, Otto, I'm going to ask you that you don't lift so high. I want you to think about more length. We don't want to arch the low back. Good. Right there. See, now he's not fully open here, but that's okay because what he was doing before was overarching his low back and that's going to create a rib flare. Good. From the base of the skull, he's going to roll one spine, one vertebrae through the spine at a time. I can think about it like a string of pearls falling down on the carriage one at a time. Good. Up. Keep that carriage home. Good. Rolling it down. Good. I'm not giving, I was holding the carriage a little bit before, but I'm not going to do that now because we're going to start to change it up. Okay. On your next one, again, thinking about length rather than lift. So I don't want you to shove the hips up. Just lift with length out the kneecaps. Hold. Now we're going to extend all the way out to two straight legs. He's keeping that long length, that idea of long length, and he's going to exhale as he bend those knees back in and hold it there. Can you keep it up there? And we'll take it back out. Good. Now you could bring your hips back down and then reset and do it again. But right now I'm going to ask him to keep those hips up there if he can. And again, not shoving the hips up, but creating length. Good. He's going to inhale as he takes this out. Hamstrings and calves are on. You can see them. They're all contracted. Good. And then he's going to exhale. Again, knees are coming over the hips. They're tracking with big toe, second toe. Good. Let's make this the last one. Good. Bringing it all the way in. And now from the base of the skull, he's going to roll down. Roll one vertebrae at a time. Good. All the way down to the carriage. Very nicely done. All right. We're going to circle around, right? Let's make sure I don't forget anything. Okay. We're going to come into mermaid on the other side. So he's going to stay on that one blue spring. Okay. And he's going to keep the right leg hooked in front now and the left leg up against the shoulder blocks. We're going to start with those side bends, okay? So the right hand is going to be on the foot bar in front of the shoulder, okay? From here, he's going to press out as he takes that left arm up and overhead. That bicep stays in front of his ear. Good. And even though he's looking at his right hand, he's keeping his shoulder square. So that's fine. Your head can turn. Good. And then he's going to come all the way back up. Left hand is going to come to the shoulder block, and he's going to take that right arm up and over again, reaching. And this is a a flexibility stretch here for him a lot, but he's taking that race line out of the pelvis. That arm helps. Good. Bringing that right hand back to the foot bar. Good. Keeping it in front of the shoulder, not behind. Again, we don't want to flare the rib or twist the torso. Good. Coming all the way back up. Good. Taking that left hand, stretching up and over. Big stretch here. 
And we'll do one more set of those. So he's going to take that hand back to the foot bar, up and over. Good. Big, long length down this left side of the body. Good. And back. Excellent. Good. And bringing that all the way back to a stacked spine. Now, he's going to change his legs. Now, in the first video, we did have um, sitting crisscross applesauce or Indian style. He's chosen to go on knees. So it's because you did knees before, we're going to have him do knees again. Knees is more challenging. We've got a lot more to think about to stabilize that pelvis. Okay, so he's going to keep, this time he's going to keep those toes nice and flat. Okay, so we don't put too much pressure on the kneecap. He wants to keep the sternum over the pubic bone. Okay, so he's lifted. So I don't want you to hinge back or anything like that. I want you to stay lifted. Okay. All right, from here, he's going to roll those shoulder blades down and back so the shoulders are rel relaxed. Good. And from here, he's going to start going to the right. So he's going to inhale. Okay, you're going to go to the left. <laughs> Either way. Good. Twist. Good. Keeping the pelvis quiet. And he's going to bring it right back through center. And he's going to inhale and twist to the right. Now, that inhale is important as he twists because on your inhale, remember, the diaphragm drops internal length in the body. That internal length is also giving the spine some space between that verte those vertebrae so that he can twist a little deeper. Okay, and that's not something that you're going to feel right off the bat. But over time, using that breath, the body will loosen, the body will get more used to this, that muscle memory, everything, and it'll get deeper. The twist will get bigger. Good. Really forcing the body into these, you know, to, to think about stabilizing and keeping the hips quiet. You really train the body to get deeper. Good. Now those, but the booty is not gripping. The inner thighs, okay, he's thinking about, even though he doesn't have a ball here or a peanut or anything in between those thighs, he's thinking about if he did the squeeze, that sensation of moving the kneecaps closer together, but don't actually move them. It's that internal feeling of bringing them closer together. It's going to pull those inner thighs like suspenders up along the spine. Okay, so he's got that uh, low belly, pelvic floor, everything's engaged. Belly button's pulled up and in. Good. And he brings that across. He's looking at the strap. He's looking at his hands, but he's just twisting from the waist up. Again, thinking about the ribs connecting to the opposite inner thigh. Good. Let's go for two more. Good. Bringing it all the way across. Good. And bringing it all the way in. And he can hang up that strap. And we're going to go into that lunge on the other side already. Good. So that left foot's going to stay on the floor. The right foot's going to come up against that shoulder block. Good. All right. Now from here, because of his height, again, I don't want him to start in a lunge. So he's probably been doing this all the, you know, he does this video all the time without me here. So <laughs> now I'm changing it all up on him. Okay. So that left foot is, I'm five foot. So obviously my knee is always down. Okay. So he's standing straight up on that left foot. Okay. He's got the hip over the ankle. Okay. Hip, knee, ankle. Okay. Here we go. Hands are on the foot bar. Left foot. Now, that carriage is only going to go out because he is bending his left knee. He is not pushing the carriage out. On one blue spring, there is not much resistance, so he shouldn't feel the need to push. Good. And then he's going to inhale as he comes all the way back up. Good. So that knee is making a connection to the carriage as he bends that left leg. Notice his left knee is not reaching back as he gets deeper into this stretch. Hip bones... Stay in alignment. Knee stays in front of the ankle with the middle of the foot, and it's still tracking with big toe, second toe. Good. And then he comes all the way back up. Good. He also see as he, as he comes into the lunge that torso makes a slight tilt. He's protecting the low back from overarching, allows him to stay in a neutral pelvis to engage the core better. Okay. He's reaching big length from the left sits bone to the left kneecap. Good. Lots of length on that thigh. Good. And then he comes all the way up on that inhale. Let's go three more here because I think we were, we were on this other side for a pretty long time with all my chitty chat talking. <laughs> Good. 
Good. And he's finding full lift and extension off of his standing leg. Okay. So that's another common fault I see is that we don't fully work through the full range of motion of our joints. Okay. So I really want you to also think about really working through the entire mobility and movement through that joint, not holding a baby bend there. That's why I didn't want him to start in a baby lunge. Good. And he's working at pressing that right hip bone forward as he opens up the right psoas muscle. Okay. He's still pressing it down towards the carriage, but he's keeping the right hip bone forward. Good. Inhale all the way up. And he's going to go for one more before we work on that straight leg stretch. Good. Now on the next one, he's going to work with that straight leg, but that back knee needs to come down. So for him, we're not going to go inside lunge yet. We're going to do that straight leg. Yeah. For him, he sets that back knee down first. Now he works at straightening the left leg as he presses back. Good. Now you're going to, he's going to think about reaching that left sits bone back, not just necessarily pressing the carriage out. This is where he, he cheats a little bit because I think the stretch is real deep on this leg. So I want you to think Otto more about keeping this hip faced forward. Okay. Yes. And opening up the back of your knee. I know it doesn't feel good. Okay. But that's the job. Good. Can you open the back of the knee just a little bit more? Good. Don't press the carriage out anymore because that's enough of a stretch for you right there. Good. Good. Excellent. Holding it there. Good. That really stretched just through the hamstring. Good. Last four. Good. Three, two, come all the way back up. I'm having him hold a little deeper so you can kind of feel that in his body. Good. Set that back knee down, but then don't worry about sending the carriage so far out as you do to open up the back of that knee. Good. Reaching that left sits bone back. Good. Excellent. That range of motion is going to be real different for everybody too. So you can't always go by the look of somebody else on the reformer because there's so much flexibility requirement and range of motion that everybody really does look so much different. <laughs> Good. And coming all the way back up. A lot of, really, you have to, to kind of think about how it feels in your body against the cues I'm giving you because the feeling is what I want you to find more than if you are looking exactly like me or exactly like Otto. Good, because it's really not going to happen that way. Good. And we'll just hold this one here before we go on to that side lunge. So he's here for six. Good. Last five, he's working. And, and I can see it's a little easier for him to keep that back knee open. Last three. Good. Last two. Good. And bringing it all the way back up. Okay, now we are going to turn and face the carriage. Now for this one, he's taking that standing leg and he's going to have that standing leg in external rotation. So again, when you do this on the floor, I want you to find the rotation from the top of the hip where the femur bone connects into the hip. That's where we swivel the leg from. Inner thigh shines forward. Toes turn out as a result of that rotation. Okay, side of the right foot is against that shoulder block. Same thing. He's going to have that left knee bend. He's going to reach that left sitting bone back. Right knee stays straight. Okay. And his range of motion may be different on this leg. Good. That left kneecap is tracking with big toe, second toe, and it's in the center of the foot. So he takes a glance down to make sure. Torso's tilted to protect the low back. Good. Inhale. Bring it all the way back up to a fully straight left leg. Good. Exhale. Bend that left knee. That's the only reason the carriage slides out because he has bent the left knee. Left knee tracks to the middle of the footbed and with big toe, second toe. Good. He's got long length on that left sitting, that left thigh, left sitting bone to left kneecap. Good. And then he's going to inhale, drawing the belly button up and in because that left inner thigh lifted up into his pelvic floor and low belly. Good. Excellent. And come all the way up. Good. Let's go for two more just like that. Good. Big stretch on that right inner thigh. He's going to get stretch on that left inner thigh as well. Good. And on the next one, I'm going to have Otto hold this one. That's where we're going to come all the way into our full range of motion. Good. Really finding that nice alignment and that reach through that left sitting bone. Good. Holding it here for six. Good. And still breathing for five. Good. A lot of these stretching movements, they're hard. I don't want you to hold your breath. You must breathe. Last three. Good. Last two. 
And he's going to inhale as he brings it all the way back up. All right, what's next? Because I just lost my train of thought. All right, we're going back to feet and straps. We're getting really close, guys. Okay, so he's going to change his springs one more time because he's been on one blue. It's a little light. We're going to add on a red spring. You know what? And I'm trying to think. In the first workout, I think I did keep him on one blue. But for today, let's do the red and the blue so he can kind of feel a difference in his body. And maybe next time he does the workout, maybe one felt better than the other. Okay, so I'm going to give him a little more resistance. Headrest is down. Do you want your headrest up? Because you're not going to be lifting. Okay. Okay, so we're not going to do any sort of short spine stretch. So we'll keep his headrest up since he's not going to be lifting his hips. Okay, he presses out to get those loops around, long loops around the arches of the feet. Okay, we're not going to go for short loops. Go for those long loops. Tailbone is glued down nice and heavy. So again, he's going to find that neutral spine and pelvis. Hip bones shine straight up. Tailbone is heavy. Belly button is up and in. Little lift in the low back, not big. Ribs are closed. Good. Shoulders and head, neck and shoulders are relaxed. All right. From here, I'm going to ask him to bring the soles of his feet together. That's going to have the knees open, and he's going to grab onto his short loops with his hands. Okay, so this is butterfly stretch. So soles of the feet are going to come together if he can bring. Can you bring the soles of your feet together? Yes. Good. Okay. But he's going to keep the heel. Or he's gonna, the reason he has his short loops is because he's pulling on them. I want him to pull on them because I want his heels to get as close to his pelvis as possible. Okay, so... Big stretch through the inner thigh here. Good. He's using some effort to bring those heels a little closer. Good. And he's not allowing any big lift in the low back. Keeping that really neutral. That's really important as we work here. Good. Holding it here for four. Good. Last three. We're going to let go of those loops in two. Good. Now on the next one, he's going to release those short loops. Okay. And he's going to let the front of the hips open. Okay, his arms can come out to the side. That's going to allow him a nice uh, stretch through the chest. And he's going to allow those feet, keeping the soles glued together, to just fall into the springs. Okay, so now he's opening up the front of the hips. Just let those straps fall over the inner thigh. That's not a big deal. Just try to ignore them. Okay, opening up the front of the hips, getting that stretch. Opening up the chest, getting that stretch. But he is not allowing the low back to overarch. I don't want his ribs to spill open. Okay, so he's keeping the core engaged. Good. So he can manage the lift of his legs right there. He's not letting it fully go. All right, you're here for four. Good. Last three. Good. Last two. Now he's going to bring those feet back up over the pelvis where they were before, and he's going to hang on to those short loops one more time. Now, his right leg is going to extend long, but the left leg is not. So you can let go of the loop if you feel comfortable, or you can hang on to the strap if you want a little support. Good, but he seems to be fine like that. Now, what he's watching for is his pelvis. We don't want it to roll so that the left hip leaves the carriage. You want both hips on the carriage tailbone is still glued down. Okay, so he's got neutral pelvis. That core is still engaged and working as we have those legs, and even though this is more stretchy here. Okay, that right inner thigh is opening, but he's getting a nice big stretch through both inner thighs here. Right foot is flexed a lot. You can think about taking those toes a little closer to the ear. So if you do have a hold on that strap or that, um, or that carabiner or anywhere, you can pull that leg a little closer to the ear. Good, he's here for four. Last three. Good. Last two. He's going to fold that right foot back in. Knee bends. Good. Staying there on the right side. His left leg is now going to open up to the side, finding that stretch. Good. So lengthening out fully, opening up the back of the knee. That left inner thigh extends all the way out the heel. He's not allowing the right hip to roll over because that's easy to do here, especially with the weight of those springs. Okay. And he can give a little extra pull on that short loop to bring those toes closer to his left ear. Good. Obviously, they're not going to get all the way up there, but you know what I mean. That <laughs> That's the general direction you want them to go. All right. You're here for four. Good. Last three. Good. Last two. Good. Folding that left leg all the way back in. He's going to take those loops off now. Hang them up behind him. Good. And once he's there, he's going to come seated on the carriage facing you. 
Okay, and we're just going to get into the glute a little bit more. So sitting nice and tall off that spine, he's going to take that left leg and he's going to cross that left ankle over the top of his right thigh. Okay, now from here, he's going to use the palm of his left hand to gently press that left inner thigh open as he rounds down over that left leg. Okay, so not a huge range of motion here in his body. Okay, but he's getting a big stretch in through that left glute. So that left sits bone area right there, big stretch. Good. And he wants to work at hinging from the top of the hips, hinging over that leg. Good. And gently just pressing on that inner thigh gives a little bit more of a tactile cue to open up. Good. And still breathing. Good. Last four. Good. Three. Last two. Good. He's going to bring that left leg back to the floor and just switch it out. Right leg is going to come across, ankle over the thigh. He's going to gently give it a nice little tactile cue. Right inner thigh is going to open. Okay, and he's going to fold down over that leg. Good. And just get a stretch right there. Right inner thigh, that right glute. Nice. Good. Holding it there. And as he exhales, okay, he can release that grip a little bit more. and kind of just let that body say, okay, it's okay. Let's release into it. It's not always comfortable. Okay. But if you work through those stretches and give them that holding time, it will lengthen out. It will, that flexibility will increase. You're here for four. Good. Last three. Last two. Good. He's going to come on up, put that right foot back down. And now he's slowly going to stand, but we're not going to come all the way up. So he's going to keep those knees soft and he's going to bring his hands down over. He's going to hang down over those legs. Knees are going to remain soft and he's going to start to inhale and stack the spine all the way from the base, all the way up. His head, neck, and shoulders are the last things to pick up. And he did it. And he did it. Yes. Again, now with me. <laughs> now he doesn't ever want to do it with me again. Nice job. <laughs> Good. So active stretch and recovery all the way back from June 2020. Okay, but re- I think it was actually one of our first reformer workouts on the channel. So really good to kind of deep dive into this. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Um, if you want more of these videos where I'm kind of coaching Otto through it, deep diving into the cues, explaining why it is the way it is, why this is the way, just let me know and I will I will definitely plan that. Okay, so I love your comments. You can find me always on YouTube, right? But on social media, I am also Just P Fit. So you can write me there as well. Direct messages, uh, PMs, I will respond to them all. All right, I will see you guys next time.